pretty nice bed. It's in a pretty odd spot, but it's a pretty smart bed. If an elk was bedded here, which I think this is an elk bed, it can literally see 360 degrees. It can see what's coming down, it can see what's coming level, and it can see whatever's coming below. The elk have not been responding, so since I don't know where the elk are, I just got on Onyx and I just kind of looked around. And this backside of this little mountain, I have never like full on like hiked through it or scouted it. So I decided to come through a bunch of thick stuff. And I got in here and there's a lot of decently used game trails. There's not a lot of sign, but all I'm looking for is just one elk. I found my first pile of uh, droppings a little bit further back and I just kind of been like zigzagging because this trail it's kind of like off and on like it'll lead you somewhere and then it'll like disperse into like three trails and then you kind of work around it and then you come back and you find the main trail and right now I'm just standing right on top of a fresh pile of droppings. I'm pretty much just scouting just kind of learning a new area in this stuff right here seems like there's a couple beds here and there but I don't know I'm gonna try my best to see if there's a wallow on here As you guys can see, we're getting the typical Northeast Washington elk experience right here. Nothing, no bugles, no cow calls. The moo cows aren't even responding. And you know it's bad when the cows aren't even responding. We are finally seeing wildlife. As I was working up this road, I saw like two deer. I don't know if I got it on video, but maybe if I got it, I just got it running away. I hiked a little bit further up here. It was a turkey poult doing its baby turkey call. And then I popped out into this little opening. And there was just a bunch of turkey there. It's like two hens and two batches of poults.
if you guys have never shot a grouse or you don't even know what a grouse is they're essentially just these little tiny birds I like to refer to them as wild chickens because that's essentially what they are they're just little chickens running around in the forest and up here in Washington you are allowed to shoot three species of grouse there's a blue grouse rough grouse and spruce grouse this one right here is a spruce grouse and out of the three the spruce grouse are the most tame I don't know if they're tame or they're not scared of humans or they're just straight up not that smart you could literally walk up to like spruce grouse and they wouldn't even like run or fly away they're absolutely just delicious birds so this one right here this is called a spruce grouse and this right here is a female generally speaking when you're looking at grouse you can usually distinguish the difference between a female and a male just by the feathers this is a spruce grouse and this is a female so she has like all these brown uh, feathers but a male a male spruce grouse is actually just more like a dark gray color and males will also have a very prominent like red eyelid it's like very very red eyelid as you guys can see here this hen she kind of has a red eyelid but the the males the male spruce grouse their red eyelid like you can't mistake that so 26 yards this is my first ever grouse kill with a with a bow and arrow so we're just going to open this up just to see what it's been eating and right off the bat you can see there it's been eating a bunch of little pine needles and just whatever these red berries are All right, it is 5.36 a.m. September 19th. Five days of season left. I'm about to hike up to the very top of this mountain. Uh, today it's a solo hunt, so it's just me by myself. I still got quite a long ways to go, but just decided to throw some bugles down here to see if I could locate some elk. Because if I locate them down low, then that probably means I don't have to go up and over this mountain. But it's just myself today, so hoping to get it done today. pretty fresh that's the freshest elk sign that I've seen all day these footprints look maybe yesterday so if these elk tracks are just like a day old that means the elk are just somewhere around here so I heard a bugle back towards from where I came from and when I first heard it it sounded like a like just like a tube like someone was blowing on it but I got over here and there's nobody over here could have been an elk
kind of trotted off. I kind of got going. There's a bull. He's wrecking a tree. I just kind of sneaked my way up just very quietly. And I look down there, I see a white rum. I don't think they winded me or anything. They just didn't want anything to do with another elk. So I just dropped a pin on these two elk right here. I'm just gonna work my way back to the car. Given the next couple days, hopefully this bull gets a little bit more fired up. There's a bear. I was just glassing around and then I looked into this little open, open patch, basically an old clear cut. I was like, oh look, there's a moose. And then after a while I was like, oh, that's not a moose, that's an elk. And then after that I was like, wait, that's not an elk, that's a bear. And sure enough, it was just kind of feeding. This camera can't zoom very far, and that's pretty far. So I think all you guys saw was a little dot, but I don't have my spotting scope with me. So it is raining, so I'm going to go hunker down in those trees right now. Just going to wait till it gets a little darker, locate, just see what we can see, hear what we can hear. A $200 pair of binoculars can do you wonders between seeing nothing and seeing something. If you don't have the money to spend thousands of dollars on a binocular, a lot of times low-end binoculars, $200 binoculars, $100 binoculars, it's better than nothing. Today's September 20th, it's the morning after, and it's myself and Joe right now. We're gonna sneak our way into where I got into those elk last night, and don't really have a game plan as to how we're gonna get them to come in or approach them, but the first thing we gotta do is we gotta locate and pinpoint their exact location, and then we'll probably work around that, but hopefully they're still there.
a very weak bugle. We have no idea where it came from. So it rained last night and it rained pretty hard and it just like washed out a lot of tracks. And then Joe and I, we literally just cut tracks. These tracks are post rainfall. So we know that they came through here after the rain stopped yesterday. So they just can't be far. So we've been playing cat and mouse with this one particular bowl. We've been chasing this bowl pretty much all morning. We started at the very bottom of this mountain and he's just been slowly working his way up this mountain and we're literally at the top of the mountain now. And he went silent on us for a while and then right where they crossed the road, there's a flat ridge that elongates down on this side of the mountain and they just went straight down there and they, I think they're bedded right there. And so we walked past because, again, we didn't know where he went. So we got to this rock, Joe threw out a bugle, and sure enough, he responded right there. And he's, he bugled like a total of three times right here. So what we're doing right now is we're waiting for the thermals to become consistent. Because right now, the sun is getting blocked by the clouds off and on, and the wind is just like doing this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to eat, we're just going to wait until we get a consistent wind, which should be blowing uphill. If we go back to where the tracks cross the road, the wind should be blowing from the elk to us and we can drop down on them. All right, fellas, so last night I went home and uh, I left my cousin Joe to sleep overnight. Well, I was planning to come back yesterday night, but dude, I was so tired. I slept through all three of my alarms, so I didn't even hit the road until like 7.30. So I got here late and Joe left a note on his door of his truck and he said he shot a cow last night. I radioed Joe and he's uh, cutting up that elk, so. All right, well, I made it up to the elk. Came here and Joe's already been uh, cutting it up for like a couple hours now. Right now it's, we're like right in the sun and it's getting hot. There's a bunch of flies. So we're gonna try to get this meat off of the elk as, as fast as possible. And then uh, pack it back down to the truck.
All right, so that is Joe and his load. Very heavy. These are the two loads that we're gonna come back next or after this first trip. Uh, that's pretty much left of the elk, just the carcass, and then we just threw the hide back over it just so that the flies weren't that bad. So we got two heavy bags left, and then the rest of the meat is right here on Joe's backpack. And then I got my uh, portion of the meat sandwiched in between onto my bag and my frame. And so they're both in a game bag, but I just put uh, this plastic over it. That way my bag just doesn't get bloody. All right, so it's four o'clock p.m. Joe and I, we just made it back to the elk and uh, we loaded up our packs. This is our second trip and we've got all the meat bags once again strapped onto our frames. So this is it for our packing meat. All we got to do is get back to the trucks. I'm gonna go back over there, get all the meat ready to go in the trucks and then cook a good meal. And then off home we go. Right now, um, I'm gonna make a pretty traditional dish with my grouse. It's basically a, a soup with it. Uh, Joe also shot a grouse and I'm just gonna combine the two together. That way we get a little bit more meat. And then Joe's gonna cook up some sausage. Yeah, I brought cilantro, green onions, garlic, some oil. It's gonna be delicious, so. Before I move on to my cleaning, uh, I just wanna give a shout out to one of my buddies, Daniel Thomas from PNW full stop the other day he saw me using like a rock for my my catch and cook video so he sent me this very um, like compact lightweight cutting board and so I haven't used it yet but it's coming in handy right now because it just slides on the side of my cooler really nice so with that being said let's get to cooking because the sun's going down and we got a lot of work to do with the meat at home so all I'm doing here is for the tenderloin and the breast I'm just cutting them into like bite sized pieces, but then I'm just leaving the, the thigh as one, just the neck. And then these, there's not a lot of meat on there, but they just add a lot of flavor. The majority of the meat you're gonna get is off of your breast, which is uh, these pieces right here. So for the breast meat, I'm just cutting them into pieces where you can like actually eat. It's a bite sized piece. And then the ones that have bones, they're just kind of more for flavor, more than anything. Oh boy, hot. Yeah. 
close up there. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> finished product. It's not always the most eye appealing, but eye appealing and flavor are two completely different things. This is a pretty standard um, grouse dish, or I should just say dish in general, because you can almost do this with literally any kind of meat, elk meat, deer meat, bear meat, grouse, turkey, geese, duck, whatever. It's essentially the same process. You just kind of fry the meat in some oil, and then you just add water, basically that's your soup or your stew, and then you just flavor it with whatever seasoning. We just use salt and pepper, so until the broth is just salty enough for you, then throw in your, your vegetables. For me, I use cilantro and green onions and garlic. That's about it, so it's pretty simple. It's best if you have it hot and it goes over cold rice, which, which is exactly what we have here, so it smells delicious, and I just dropped a delicacy right there but it's just simple rice and grouse stew or soup depending on how you want to look at it mm. just some breast meat we got everything loaded back into the trucks we're gonna go home rest up and then I'm gonna do one final push for the last two or three days so Hopefully we can make it happen then. If not, then it's time to start prepping for deer season.